And so today we end the 50 days of the Easter season. For today's Pentecost Sunday, there are two main points in this homily. First, who is the Holy Spirit? Second, what are some practical ways to deepen our relationship with him? Okay, so who's the Holy Spirit? Well, Pentecost means 50th day in Greek. Pente, in the word Pentagon, means five for five sides. Well, so for the Jews, Pentecost is the 50th day after Passover. And at Pentecost, the Blessed Virgin Mary and the 11 apostles were gathered in the upper room. And both the institution of the Eucharist on Holy Thursday and Pentecost, interestingly, took place in an upper room. And in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles, it is written that tongues as of fire parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Some fathers of the church look at Pentecost in the New Testament as the opposite of the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament. Whereas in the Tower of Babel, God scattered the nations into different languages where they could not understand each other. But at Pentecost, God gathers them together into the one language and one Lord Jesus Christ. And that one language that they understand is the language of the love of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit overcomes division and sin. The Word of God also says that each one of them heard them speaking in their own language, and yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues. Here, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, the Advocate Christ sent after He ascended into heaven. The Spirit unites the nations into Holy Mother Church, into a fraternal unity that is stronger than any political or cultural international organization. The Holy Spirit is God. In the creed, we profess that he is the Lord and giver of life, who with the Father we adore, worship, and glorify. God's very gift to us is himself. And he is the third person of the Holy Trinity. You know, I love the movie Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars fan. But the Holy Spirit is not the same as the Force. Because in that movie, the Force is this impersonal, material thing. But the Holy Spirit, on the other hand, is a real living person who loves you and loves me. And he asks for you to love him too. The Son of God was obedient unto death, but the Holy Spirit is free and blows wherever he wills. And speaking of gifts, we see in the second reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, quote, to each individual is the manifestation of the Spirit given for some benefit, end quote. I actually have to distinguish between a gift and a charism. Okay, so whereas a gift is a benefit, like the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, this is for your benefit. It benefits me. It benefits you. But this gift that is a charism benefits other people. So there are gifts that benefit me, and there are gifts that are meant to benefit other people. Now, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that we receive at Confirmation in that the lowest of those gifts is called fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord basically means to be humble, to be your beautiful self, to be who God intended you to be. It means humility. Then there are piety, knowledge, fortitude, counsel, understanding, and the highest of the, these seven gifts is finally wisdom. These seven gifts are permanent, but there are charisms that each one of you has here that God gives to you. So, for example, some of you have the gift of healing, while others do not. Some have the gift of hospitality, 
Well, somebody else has the gift of discernment of spirits. You get the idea. Somebody might have the gift of music, while others have the gift of administration. And if the Holy Spirit wants to give these gifts to you, and you say no, he's going to give it to somebody else. And these gifts are meant to build up the body of Christ. Okay, so somebody that has the, the gift of healing, for example, can heal others, but not himself. Okay, so the charism is meant, in this case, for the benefit of the community. So ask yourself, dear brothers and sisters, what charisms or gifts do you have to build up your local parish, or your family, or your community? All right, so that's the first point. Who's the Holy Spirit? What are his gifts? Now let's go to the second main point. After reflecting on who the Holy Spirit is, let's look at practical ways that you and I can develop a closer relationship with him. Well, the first way is to receive the sacrament of confirmation. It is important to receive this sacrament as early as possible. The sacrament of confirmation will give you special gifts to complete your mission on earth. St. Catherine of Siena, after whom this parish is named, is the great doctor and teacher of the church. And she said this, If you are who you are meant to be, you will set the whole world on fire. We will bring the gospel to all the nations. It's not just this private thing. Confirmation, especially for you young people, is not graduation. It's just the beginning. When you and I are baptized and confirmed, we are more strictly obligated to defend our faith when it is challenged. So I invite you adults here who are not confirmed to receive the sacrament of confirmation if you have not yet done so. Let's pack our RCIA programs this fall. We should live a sacramental life because Jesus gave ordinary human beings, his priests, the power to forgive sins. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. And Father Rusty has this at ordination. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. So go to confession. And finally, one way to grow closer to him is through Pentecost in the Holy Rosary. It is the third glorious mystery of the rosary. The first glorious mystery is the resurrection. The second one is the ascension. And the third one is the descent of the Holy Spirit. So perhaps if you have not been devoted to the Holy Rosary, it is a way to grow closer to the Holy Spirit. Maybe you might want to start today for Pentecost Sunday to just pray one decade, one Our Father and ten Hail Marys, and meditate on Pentecost. St. Louis Marie de Montfort said that the surest and quickest way to become holy and to become a saint is through Mary, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Let us consider consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary. And in closing, dear brothers and sisters, we saw two points in this preaching. Number one, who is the Holy Spirit? And number two, how can you and I develop a closer and more intimate love for the Holy Spirit in our lives. May we individually be renewed. May these children who are going to be baptized be renewed. And let us live the words of the responsorial psalm today. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth.